Swami gives you things for a purpose. I tell you what I what I should do is to tell you about three different types of miracles that I experienced in the early days. One is a transformation of something into something else. And that's in connection with this ring. The other is a transmutation of one type of matter into another. That's the most convincing miracle I had in those days because I was still a skeptic, you see. And the other one is a teleport, something that comes from a long way away. It was something very appropriate. I'll tell you about those three. Start off with a ring. Can you show me that? Yeah. It's beautiful. It's a diamond ring. Yeah. Well, Swami took about maybe a dozen of us, men and women, to a place north of here called Horsley Hills, up in the hills. And we were staying at a place there called Circuit House. And a sort of place that's usually used by ministers of the government definitely, to go there or take the guests, bringing their own staff. Not like that, not, not a guest house as we know it, because you have to bring your own food and your own uh, staff, workers. Anyway, we got it because, really, because of Swami, but uh, and there was a man called Rama, Ramanathan, T. Ramanathan, I think it was, and he was a uh, district uh, district engineer of that area. And when this circuit house was not being used, it was available, he got it for Swami. Really. And Swami invited a few people, including Virus and myself, my wife Virus and myself. And he drove us up there. But that's also something <laughs> that's has its funny side, but I'll skip over that. And uh, here we are at Circuit House, and uh, it's a place where all the units open onto a balcony, and the balcony overlooks the garden, the garden overlooks the bush, and they're beyond the, the countryside, you see, because they're pretty high up on top of Horsley Hills. And uh, the next morning when I got up, well, we won't go into the details there, but the next morning, one of the party, there were two young men in the party. I remember the name of one was Ohm, and he was the son of uh, one of the families that had a lot of big bakeries, and then they opened a ice cream shop called Joy Ice Cream. And Ohm now is married with his own, with a family of his own, living near, near Brindavan, Whitefield, and he runs a factory. This, but at this time he was a young man of about maybe 18, and there was another young man with him. They were part of the party. And either Ohm or the other one came in and said to me, Swami wants you to go into the garden. So I thought, fine. Walk with God in the garden, what's better? So I went out and I found Swami walking around and he's only company with the two young men. And, uh, and then I walked with him and there were some photographs taken by the, one of the boys and Swami, I noticed, every so often he would pluck a berry or something from a bush we passed in the garden. And he'd look, examine it and he'd throw it away. But finally he picked one from a small bush and it was a button rose bush, he told me afterwards. And he had this little... Uh, you know, button rose, it was not in bloom, it was in bud. 
and uh, he looked at he was satisfied for some reason that I don't know he, he was satisfied with that so he said over to me he said you you carry that so I did my palm walking around uh, well eventually we went back inside and Swami came into the uh, into the room that was given to my wife and I <coughs> We had a, a, a fine bedroom, a dressing room, bathroom, opened onto a back balcony. It opened from the front balcony to the back. Very, very comfortable place. Swami came in. There was an armchair in the room, and I said, oh, sit down, Swami. And he did. He sat down in the armchair. And we sat on the edge of the bed, just in front of him. And two or three men came in, engineer, Ramanathan Reddy was there, and uh, and uh, uh, Raja Reddy, who I've just met on the veranda today, and uh, what was it? I think an old doctor was in the party. Anyway, three, about three men came in and sat on the floor around Swami, and uh, none of the women were brought in. They were in a about four or five women in another unit next door. So Swami said uh, to me, well, give me that uh, pud. So I gave it to him. He looked at it and held it up. And he said, what is it, do you know? And we said, no, we don't have any idea, Swami. He said, I think he said it's a bud of a button rose. And he, holding it there, he said to me, what would you like it to become? So I said, here we are, now we're going into a real a real transformation miracle. And I didn't know what to say. I could have said anything, but I, I just said, whatever Swami likes, whatever Swami likes. So he put this little green button rose into his hand. He closed his fist and blew on it, opened it, and there lying in his palm was this diamond. So Iris gave a squeal <laughs> of excitement. And he went, ladies next door, he said, ladies are almost jealous about precious stones. So that's the origin of that. So Swami materialized it by blowing on the rosebud. On the rosebud. The rosebud disappeared and in his hand was this diamond. And what year was that? That year was 1967. You have seen Swami materialize many things. Yeah. Well, I tell you, if if you, if, you know, if there are no questions on that, I'll tell you a transmutation one. I would like to hear that. Yes, because that's the one that impressed me the most. You see, if you're in a semi-skeptical frame of mind, as I was for a long time, I don't think you were, because I know your story of how you came to Swami. But you see, I, I, was, I was brought up on science, Steen, and I, I had to question everything. You, see. you had the intellectual, intellectual approach. Yes, I had to see for sure that whatever Swami did was not done by Houdini type of, of right. um, conjuring, you see. So, he knew that. <laughs> he always would pull his sleeves up when he was materialized anything from there, you know. And uh, so one day, during this time, we said about 10 days at was Hills with him. Wonderful it was. And he told me afterwards, he said, you've got to write the book. He said, you need some material, you know. And I got a lot of it there at Horsley Hills. So, we're walking about outside Circuit House on the bro on the ground, you know, and there was a scattered a little bit of a lot of broken bits of rock, and it was granite rock, you know, not the black granite like we to walk on every day here, but different colours in it, you know, pink and different, you know, different uh, ingredients of the granite were showing very well, and uh, they were they were just scattered on the ground as we were walking about talking. Swami was walking around, we were going with him, the whole party of us. And presently he picked up a piece, it was several times he picked up a piece, 
of granite and threw it away. He has to select with whatever piece he, whatever thing he wants to work with. So finally he picked up a piece about, oh, maybe, what's that, six inches? Yes. Long and about three or four inches broad and thick. And um, carried it in in his own hand. We went straight into one of the one of the bedrooms. I think it was one the girls were occupying, and and uh, we all sat down. Swami sat down on the carpet, crossly, and we all sat around him in a semicircle. And he started, as he used to do in those days, teaching us truth, spiritual truths about life and how we should live. Uh, he used to, in those days, any miracles he performed, he usually gave you a little talk first about, you know, a spirituality, that is the reality of life and the way he wanted people to think and to live, what he'd been teaching us all these years. He'd talk a little bit about that. But while he was talking about it on this occasion, he was playing with this bit of rock, just sitting on the carpet. He'd throw it up a couple of, maybe a couple of feet in the air, and let it fall onto the carpet. And he did he had a number of times he did that. And I was sitting, ah, uh, well, maybe about two meters away from him on the carpet. And they, we were all in a semicircle, and I got the closest. He used to let me do that because he knew I was. I was trying to, you know, find out about his miracles, to write about them. So, after a while, he just bowled this piece of granite over to me, a jagged piece of granite, and uh, he said, can you eat that? Just like that, can you eat that? I picked it up, this hard granite, I said, I made some remark, like not with his teeth, Swami, or something. And then I sent it back to him. I thought, now something's going to happen. Why does he ask me, can I eat it? So, when he got it back, he just threw it up again and let it fall on the carpet once. And then he did the second time. And I had my eyes fastened on it, you know. My sight was screwed right on that piece of granite. You see, that he wasn't doing anything that Houdini would have been pleased with. So, second time it fell on the carpet, I, I was watching it, it was only about a couple of meters away, I could see a slight change in his color. And... Uh, but there was no change in its shape. It was the same jagged piece of rock in shape and appearance. Not the slightest change in shape, which was a good thing, because otherwise I might have thought that he'd somehow or another substituted one for another. You know what I mean? Yeah. It remained just that piece of jagged rock in appearance. And he picked it up, and I could see it had gone a little bit lighter in color. And he sent it back to me again and asked the same question. Can you eat that? I could see then it was no longer granite rock. It was sugar candy. And he broke a piece off to give each of us. That's what I call transmutation. He changed the matter completely, the atoms in that rock, to turn it into sugar candy. So that was the one that convinced me more than anything else that Swami had this divine power of changing the nature of matter itself. So when we walked out afterwards, he and I went out on the balcony, we were leaning on the banister of the balcony, looking out at the great line of hills. <coughs> and I remembered the song about the big rock candy mountains that was popular when I was young. So just for a joke, I said to him, turn the whole of that hill into sugar candy, Swami. And you see, he knew I was joking, but he wanted to show me something, teach me something there. Very important. 
He, he didn't say, I can't do it, because he could have. If you can turn one piece of rock, you could turn the whole of the hill. You know, that's the nature of miracles, as taught in the Course in Miracles. And uh, so he said, no, he said, I don't want to interfere with the work of Mother Nature too much. And that was the answer. Well, the other one is what is known as an airport or a teleport, you see. And, uh, what does that mean? Well, you see when I tell you the story. Now, he said to me one day up there in Horsley Hills, he said, uh, what year were you born? And I said, 1906, Rami, 1906. And <clears throat> he said, ah, there was a special coin uh, minted in America that same year you were born. He said, it was a, it's a coin that's not in circulation now, and it's a, uh, it's a special one. I found out afterwards why it was called, he called it special. He said, I'll get you one. I'll get you one. He didn't say I'll make you one. He said, I'll get you one. And so he tried to make us sure understand, you see. Swami does do apples or teleports as well as all the other things he does. He can bring something from anywhere in the world in a flash, in a second. And uh, so he said, I'll get you one. To tonight, he said, when we're back in the, in the building. And um, so that evening, he, he came into our room again, and uh, I've forgotten whether some of the others might have come too. I suppose they did. And he said, he said, now I guess you're that coin. And he was waving his hand in the usual way, palm down, and he said, it's coming. It's coming. It is a little bit longer than he takes to produce for booty, but not long. Well, you say two, two seconds, three seconds. And he closed his hand on it and told me to open mine, and he dropped into my palm a golden $10 American $10 piece. See? Mm -hmm. I'd never seen one before because they're not so nice. He told me that. I wouldn't give you this if it was in circulation, but it's not. Now, I was very thrilled with that. And I, through his grace, I had the opportunity later on in America, I was staying with a coin collector, an expert, see, who was the brother-in-law of the famous Elsie Cowan. And uh, when we, we were, the first evening there, he wanted to know this story about the coin. And I told him, now, his name was Carl something. And he wasn't that interested in Swami's apples, but he was very interested in that coin. So I, I got it out of my bag and showed it to him. And he examined it very carefully. And he noted all the points of 13 stars and different things on it, and little s, it was hardly visible. And, one, and he said, yes. That coin was minted in, Sa in San Francisco in 1906, the year you were born, no doubt about that. And he said, they're very difficult to get. That's why Swami says, he went and got his catalogue and told me how many were minted that year, much fewer than most years. That's why Swami says it was special. Not many coins were minted that year, and that's why they're very difficult to get for collectors to get. And uh, Carl told me that. He said, it's difficult to get these coins. They pay hundreds of dollars for one, he said, the collectors, uh, because they're hard to get. And he wanted to buy mine, but I wouldn't let him. I still have it back home. And so that is the type where he bring you something from a long distance, you see, a teleport or airport. Uh, and uh, I think that's all I, I can tell you about that coin, except that I knew it was a, 
a proper coin minted the year I was born. Swami had not manufactured it, which he probably could do, you know, but he had not done that. It, it was an apple. So this is uh, three sorts of miracles. Yes, whereas well, trans, trans uh, formation, like when he transformed a button rose into a diamond, transmutation, when he changes the actual basic material as in the, as in the rock, making it into sugar candy, and uh, one in which he brings something from a long distance away.